All right, Life Point Church, good morning. Uh, thank you all so much for being here with us again on a Sunday morning for Life Point Live. Man, you guys are awesome. Um, I hope that you all have had an awesome week and it's been good, um, even though things are crazy. Um, I hope you've been able to find um, some peace and some comfort and I've uh, been connecting with each other virtually and been connecting most importantly with God during this time. So I hope it's been a great week. And again, man, thank you all for being a part of LifePoint Online. Um, the, again, the number of people that have been joining us each week it's just been it's just been humbling, and I'm and I'm so thankful for it. So whether you are on here right now and you are a part of Life Point, thank you for being here. If you're not a part of Life Point, you're just checking it out. Welcome, you're our honored guest, and we're so so happy that you're here checking us out. Or if maybe you have a home church, but you've just been kind of hopping around on Facebook and checking out different churches, just when your church isn't um, streaming. Um, Welcome as well. We, we love that you're here, and um, we hope that God speaks to each and every person um, that, that's here online this morning. So as always, I want to encourage you to go ahead and let your friends know that we're live. Um, you can start that watch party, um, and then get in those comment sections, connect, do life with each other in that comment section, um, and it's just a great place to interact. So I want you to do that, and um, today um, what we're doing, as you may have seen, uh, the graphic that's been out there, but we're starting a new series or, or collection of talks called When God's Not Fair. Now, throughout my life, my 37 years of life, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the words, man, that's not fair. God, that is not fair. We hear it all the time. Man, I've heard it. I've heard it. Um, it, it, from my kids, that was one of their favorite favorite phrases when they were younger. I, I heard it from a lot of my employees when I worked at um, as a director at Uspiritus. Um, I've heard it from other family members. I've heard it from friends. I've even heard it from people at Life Point Church. And believe it or not, I've heard it come out of my own <laughs> very mouth many, many times. And man, with everything that's going on in our world today and, and the chaos that is um, this, this pandemic, um, especially for those who have been negatively impacted by this, whether you've been impacted financially, um, you lost your job or your business is struggling or, or maybe your health has deteriorated from it, or maybe even your mental health is really struggling. Um, because of the, isol the, the feelings of isolation. But, but for those of us that have really struggled through this pandemic, it's really easy for us to kind of step back and look at all this and be like, man, this, none of this is fair. God, why, why are you allowing this to happen? Because this isn't fair. But what is fair? Like, what, is it, what does it even mean for something to be fair? And, and based off of that, if, in reality, if we ask ourselves, do we really want God to be fair according to our set of standards and definition? Because our standards of fair is basically following the exact standard of what's right or what's proper, no matter what. We're true to what is we, we see as right. No deviation from it. No gray area. No single case situations where we say, you know what? Ah, we're going to let this one roll because for the greater good or because they were actually really doing this or whatever. There's no gray area. There's no single case outliers. But following the exact letter of the law, executing the standard of what is right, and proper all the time. And if God operated this way, what would be the ramifications of that? Really, really think about it. No gray area, no grace, just fair to the letter of the law. Do we really want that? And, and yes, trust me, I get it. There, there are times 
and situations where things have happened in, in, in our lives, in my life, or around us that we've seen that truly, when you kind of break it down, they're just, they're just not fair. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to, to put it. I mean, I think about the, the Good Samaritan, right, that's, that's maybe on the side of the road and is, is trying to help someone out in need, and, and then some drunk driver, you know, veers off the road and hits him. I think about the, the good employee, right? The hardworking employee that's a great leader that, that doesn't get the raise or promotion that they honestly were best qualified for, but they just don't get it. Or maybe even more tragic is the, the death or the loss of a, a child or a baby or the diagnosis of some type of critical disease. In those moments, yes, we're broken. We're hurt, we're confused, and, and, and we're scared, and we're angry. And it leaves us with just this thought or this, this statement where we're like, God, I don't get it. This is not fair. Why are you letting this happen? It's not fair. We get upset about that. But let me ask you this. What about those times when God gives us what we don't deserve? What about those times when God doesn't give us what we do deserve? Is that fair? Is, is it? According to our standards and definition, no, it's not fair because fair would be us getting exactly what we deserved. But you see, when God gives us things that we don't deserve and doesn't give us things that we do, we're not really crying out that that's not fair right? We just kind of receive it, we stay quiet, and we keep it moving. This, this is what to me is interesting about fair. We stay quiet about that. When something good happens that's not fair, for us, we're quiet. But we're quick to holler out the injustices and call them out and say this isn't fair when whatever the thing is that's not fair hurts us or has a negative impact on our life. I think there's a, a great example of this found in, in Matthew chapter 20 when Jesus is, is teaching his, his disciples and he's trying to help them understand what the kingdom of God is going to be like. Like He's helping them understand what, what membership in his kingdom and association with his kingdom is actually like and what it takes. He's explaining to them that it's not about your religious heritage or, or your religious works or how good or you are or you're not, what he's telling them is it's about grace and grace alone. And so in Matthew chapter 20, Jesus starts out by telling this story, right? This, this parable about a, a landowner. And, and so this landowner owner goes out to the marketplace early in the morning and he finds some people standing around. So he offers them work. He offers them to come work in his fields and his vineyard all day long. And for their work, he would pay them a full day's wage, which is one denarii. And so they agree. He gets them out to the vineyard and they start working. About 9 a.m., he goes back to the marketplace. He sees some more people. So he strikes up the same deal with them. He's like, hey, you come work in my, my field. I'll give you a day's uh, worth of pay and, um, and, I, and I'll, I'll pay you what's right. So on they went to the vineyard. And this happened again at, at noon, then at 3 and then at five in the afternoon, he goes back to the marketplace and he sees some other people standing around. And he's like, hey, why, why aren't you all out working? And, and basically what they say is nobody hired us. We're not working because no one would hire us. And he's like, cool, I got you. You can go on out in my fields and work. So go on. And so they, he strikes the same deal. I'll pay you what's right. And then he sends them out to their field. So then that evening, the, the landowner has his foreman call all the guys in and, and, and all the people that were working. He brings them back into, in, uh, to him and he's like, I'm going to pay you. But he starts paying the ones who started working last, which I think is incredibly interesting. He didn't go to the guys uh, and the people that, were, that started first, first thing in the morning that actually worked the full day. He started with those people that, that came last. And guess what he paid them? Those, those, those individuals that worked from five on for about an hour, he paid them a full day's wage, one denarii. And so he pays them, 
I'm sure they stayed quiet, were very stoked, appreciative, and went about their way. Then it came to the people that started at five, same thing, one denari. They get the people at three, one denari. Noon, one denari. 9 a.m., one denari. So, so these guys that, that you know, worked all day long, they're starting to think in their head, you know what? He's paying all these people that didn't work a full day, one denari. Maybe we're going to get more. So let's pick up the story here in Matthew um, chapter 20. We're going to start in, in verse 10. We'll pick it up here. And he says, when, when those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would, they would receive more. But they too were paid one day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you've paid us for working all day in the scorching heat. Basically, they're like, bro, this isn't fair. We worked all day. We grinded all day, and you're paying these dudes that worked one hour the same as us. That's not fair at all. And so uh, they continue, and, he, and, and the landowner answered. He said, he said to one of them, friend, it's calm and collective, friend, I have been, have I, haven't I been unfair? He says, I haven't been unfair. Don't you agree? Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? He said, bro, I haven't been unfair. You agreed to this. So he said, take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I'm kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then. Now he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And those who are first will be last. Was this fair? In reality, the only people that this wasn't fair to were those that actually only worked a few hours and got a full day's pay. That wasn't fair. But to the people that were crying out that this isn't fair, it actually was fair because they had, he, he honored their agreement. So it was 100% fair. But in their mind, because they saw others getting something different, not the same as them, then they were crying out, it's unfair. And again, I think that's so interesting because the ones who actually, the, the thing was unfair to them, they were quiet, they received it, probably said, thank you so much, and they went about their way. See, it really depends on whether we view something as fair or not from our standard is how it affects us how we interpret that, how we receive that, how it affects us personally. What's fair or not fair is dependent upon our definitions and our standards of fair. But I want you to understand that with God, God's definitions and standards on everything are not the same as ours. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts aren't our thoughts. So in this series, when, when God's not fair, we're going to be looking at this from a different perspective than what you probably thought when you originally saw the title or heard it, that when God's not fair. We're going to take a different approach, and, and we're going to focus on the fact that God's love is not fair. God's love is not fair. Fair, And that's what we're going to focus on throughout this series. So let me just go ahead and ask you, and I want you to be honest. And if you feel, feel free to, or if you're comfortable, go ahead and, and comment down in the section and answer this. But let me ask, do you deserve God's love? Like, honestly, do you think that you deserve God's love based on God's perfect standards, right? His standard of perfection. Have you earned God's love? Are you worthy of God's love? Do you deserve it? And if you're being honest, the answer is 100% no. You don't deserve it because we've all lied, right? We've all been dishonest. 
We've all acted in, in, in anger. We've all had anger. We've all been lustful at times. We, we've all said hurtful things to somebody or said hurtful things about someone behind their back, right? We've, we've gossiped. We've ignored God. We've neglected our relationship with God. We put other things above God. And the list could go on and on. So again, do we deserve God's love? No, not a bit. But despite all that, despite all of our flaws and our failures, does God still love us? And the answer is yes. Without a doubt, yes, God loves you. And so by our definition and standard, simply put, that's not fair. God's love for us is not fair because we don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. We have no right to God's love because of the things that we've done. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. Yet he freely gives it to us. Therefore, God's fair or God's love is not fair. And to further drive this, this uh, point home, um, I, I want to share with you some of my favorite, personal favorite scriptures that remind us of God's love and how unworthy we are in, in such a beautiful way. That reminds us that God's love is truly not fair and it should put things into perspective and help us to learn to be 100% thankful and grateful for for uh, for the fact that God loves us when we don't deserve it. Lost my notes for a second. Technology, right? The blessing and the curse. Not really sure what's going on. Hold tight. There we go. Sorry, I needed my face. All right, so let's look at some of these passages of scripture that, that remind us of how good God's love is and how undeserving we are of it and how unfair it is. The first passage of scripture I think about is John 15, 13, when Jesus tells his disciples this. He says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. He said, there is no example greater of love true love, the most pure love, than to give your life for somebody. Then in Romans 5 eight, we read this, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ dies for us. While we were sinners, unworthy, undeserving of God's love, he died for us. Again, the ultimate act of love, the greatest love ever is to lay down your life for a friend. And when, and when God showed his love and demonstrated his love for us, the love that we didn't deserve, he showed the greatest love by giving us his life. Gave his life so that we could live and it was completely and utterly unfair. And then there's probably the most well-known and powerful verse in all of scripture as it relates to the gospel message and the truth of God's unfair love. And it's in John 3, 16. We all know it, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. God so loved the world. God's love is for anyone and everyone. And those who receive it and believe in him will not perish, but will have life eternal with God connected to the Father here and then afterwards for all eternity. His love is pure. It's, it doesn't discriminate. It's for everyone. And none of us deserve it. It's what's so unfair about it. And then Ephesians, Two, uh, chapter two, verse four and five, Paul reminds us of, uh, of God's unfair love when he says, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much 
that even though we were dead because of our sin, even though we were, we were a mess, right? Even though we didn't deserve it and we couldn't earn it and we didn't earn it, even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is not only, it, or I'm sorry, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. You see, it's not fair at all because we didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. And we couldn't because we were dead in our sin, in our funk, in our mess, doing our own thing. We were dead and we could not receive and deserve God's love, but he gives it to us anyways. It's beautiful. It's incredible. And it should lead us to be so, so thankful every second of every day, thankful for God's unfair love. Thank for the fact that God is unfair. And I know that sounds crazy, but we have to think about it from that perspective. Because we were dead. But because of God's love that's not fair, he gave us life through Jesus. It's such an incredible thing. Trust me, I, I get it. I, I've had plenty of moments uh, and times of confusion and anger, frustration and anger towards God for something not being fair. And, and, it's, and it's so, it can consume me. But let me ask you this one final question, because I know you've had that same situation. I've talked to you, I know many of you, and, and if I don't know you, we're all human. So I know we've had those moments where we feel like God wasn't fair in a certain situation and we were frustrated and anger, angry. But when is the last time that you actually thanked God for not being fair? When did you, have you thanked God last for the fact that his love for you is not fair? We're quick to say, God, this isn't fair, and I don't like this, and I'm mad about this, but we're not so quick. We're pretty quiet when it comes to saying, God, the fact that you love me is not fair whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you for not being fair when it comes to your love. God's love is all-consuming. It's pure. It's powerful. But again, we get confused because God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And his ways, man, they are not our ways. And it's not easy at times. But we have to understand that fact, that God's ways are not our ways, that his thoughts are not our thoughts. We have to understand that and come to terms with it. Because just as there are those times where things happen that we feel that are unfair, that we don't like, that hurts us or hurts someone we love or, or it has some type of negative effect on our life. There are so many times that we could say, God, you're not fair and I'm so thankful for it because you don't give me what I do deserve and you give me what I don't deserve. We have to change our perspective when it comes to God not being fair and we need to stop and thank him for it. So the next time you feel yourself getting frustrated and angry or sitting here thinking, God, this isn't fair, I want you to remember that God demonstrated his love for you and that while you were still a sinner, when you didn't deserve it, when you were dead, he died for you. And God rose Jesus again so that you could have life, so that you could receive his love. You could feel his love that love that is completely unfair. Remember this and thank him for it. Thank him constantly for it. Let's pray. God, we, we come to you again this morning so thankful, so thankful that you're not fair when it comes to your love because each and every one of us deserve nothing but death, destruction because we're fallen, we're flawed. According to your perfect standard, we are, we are nowhere close to that. I know for me personally, if, if being connected to you had to do with how good I am or my religious works 
or, or any of that stuff, I would never be able to see your love. I would never feel or experience your love because I'm so flawed. So I'm thankful that you're unfair when it comes to loving me. That you love me so much that you sent your son, Jesus. And I thank you for that. And God, I pray for each person that's listening this, mor this morning or is listening after the fact that you would bless them, that they would feel and receive your unfair love in this very moment. And they would realize it, that they don't deserve it, and that they would praise you and worship you and thank you for it. So God, continue to be with us. Continue to help us to grow closer to you, to be more like you, to be sanctified. And God, I pray for those who don't know you, Lord, as Savior, that they would come to know you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us. That's your name we pray. Amen. So again, thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning here on LifePoint Live. Um, I just, I just, I'm again, I'm just so overwhelmed that you're here with us, that you hang out with us. And it's for those of you that call Life Point Church home. Um, again, as I always say, if you need prayer, if you have any needs, uh, if you have any questions about Life Point Church, you want more information, um, or if you want to know what it takes to have that connected relationship with Jesus, man, get in the comments or send me a direct message. Um, you can send me an email. Um, you can find my email address on our website, but just get in contact with me. I would love to have a conversation with you about any of those things. And if you have needs, we want to do our best to meet those. And if you have prayer requests or prayer needs, we want to pray over those things. So let us know, stay in contact and continue to do life with us. Also, if um, you call LifePoint Church home or you just want to love on LifePoint, you can always give. Um, even though we're not physically meeting in person, you can go on our website um, lpc502.com top right hand corner is an online giving button you click it it takes you to a safe and secure place where you can give um, but we encourage those that are Christ followers and call Life Point Church home to be faithful in your giving to give biblically because um, God asks us for a portion of that back and we want to take that and we want to be good stewards of it and we want to love our community and we want to reach as many people as we can with the gospel and meet as many needs as possible so we hope that you'll get in on that action and um, encourage you to do that. Also, um, next week is Easter, right? And it's so crazy that we're going to be doing Easter in, in, you know, in this environment. But I'm stoked for it, and I hope you are too. So invite your friends. Start inviting them today to come hang out with us on uh, LifePoint Live um, Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, so be here for that. And we're going to continue on with this series talking about um, God, when, when God is not fair, focusing on God's unfair love. And we're going to continue this conversation. And what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at individual stories and situations in people's lives when they had this crazy personal encounter with God's love that wasn't fair. And so I hope you'll join us next week uh, for Easter as we start, start that off um, and continue on with this conversation. Again, thank you all so much for being here with us. We love you. Um, check out um, our, our social media throughout the week. We'll be connecting. We'll be doing more things, more prayer nights like we did last week, which was awesome. Um, we're just going to continue to engage. So uh, we love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of LifePoint. Uh, thank you for being with us. And uh, we will see you next time. Love you guys. Lord, you love me as I am and you never let me go.